Hello people, this is Andrew here for a dose of Drew and another bit of Friday Night Knives. And tonight we're going to be looking at the QSP Gannet. Actually a really nice knife. It's in a very, very competitive price point here where it is uh, around the $80 mark. Um, I believe in most uh, most areas you'll be able to find it uh, a little over that 80 82 80 to 85 something like that depending upon where you go it is a front flipper for those who, for you, if you can't see um deep carry one side only carbon this i have the carbon fiber and brown micarta this is a red carbon fiber i don't know if you can see that in the light it is essentially uh red car red carbon or carbon fiber with red dye in the matrix of the uh, resin so you get colored resin you get wonderful uh, carbon fiber up up in there it's really quite beautiful actually that little mark you see on the side is where I dropped it that is from me not QSP just to uh, may, make sure everyone knows that is me um, another thing you'll see right there is 154 cm is the steel a really nice steel Pretty much a full flat grain with a little with a wonderful little swedge right there. Uh, real quick, this is three and a quarter inches, uh, seven point seven five inches all around on that. Give some sort of standardized measurement here. So we're looking at almost eight inches, so seven point seven five seven three quarters inches all the way around. A three point two five blade, but if you look. Real close is close to three and three eighths. I'm not gonna lie, it's 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 a little bit more about three point three inches. Uh, I would say blade width is just under an inch as far as the blade height goes. There, it comes down to an extraordinary edge. It is really well ground and well done. I I can't deny that the drop point where it comes up and out gives it a very buoyish flavor and feel to it. It has some nice cutouts. It's got a nice flat spot out here for you to get your finger in there. Some jimping on the top. That is just enough. Uh, uh, the kind I like. It has some of, uh, I've seen some other QSPs that have this as well. Uh, most of them would be the Leopard where you have a bit of a jeweling almost for the jimping on the, uh, on the release tab for the flipper. Action is pretty good for a flipper tab. This is running claimed 3.44 ounces. I am betting it's right about there. It's not super light. It is milled out on the inside. I think you can see a little bit of the holes right there. So there is some milling, um, which is nice. The design of this is actually quite interesting because it puts it in a really, really unusual spot where it's almost full size flipper 154 cm right at the 80 dollar price point before we go into that price anymore we're going to do a little bit of size comparison just because we need to give a little bit more reference here so for certain size comparisons here i will give you the rat number two in d2 right alongside here the Honey Badger Warren Cleaver in medium with the Choil in D2. Give you a quick look there. You'll see it's a little bit bigger than the medium Warren Cleaver and definitely bigger than the Rat 2. It's, it's a fairly decent sized knife here when you start getting to almost 8 inches overall. Another one real quick here. We have the Kershaw Blur. This is an M4 variant. And not just any leak, but a random leak. As you can see, it's 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 got the it's it's right up really close to the blur in overall size, but it's more slender and sleek. Uh, no doubt about it. It's it's really close. Definitely larger than the leak there. For those who are used to those kind of size comparisons. For something just a little bit different here, we're going to go with another uh, single knife. 
This here's the Para 3 and the Spy 27 variant with the blue cobalt blue handles. As you can see, almost the same size of handle, but definitely much more blade um, when it comes to this knife. It's, it's, it's really close. And for one more, just to give it a little bit of panache, the Blue Knives Bander. As you can see, it is much, much larger. Uh, the handle is really where it is. The banter is a great knife for its overall dimensions and blade to handle size. Still is. So see, there's much more room on this knife. One last one to get the Civivi. Do I need to say it's Elementum here? A little bit bigger all the way around. If you match up the pivots or to the fronts, you'll see the Civivi has nearly, nearly the same dimensions. It's just a little bit more compact all the way around. Civivi, a great knife. Now, it, on to QSP. The design, as I, as I can say, it's a little bit slender. It's, it's, it's a good mid-size knife size. Um, it, it's definitely got the right dimensions as far as overall size. As you can see, the blade is well ground. It's a, almost a polished satin. It's, a, it's, it's slightly mirrory. You can definitely catch the light with it. Uh, the buoy-ish type profile where it runs out and then goes to the clip point, extraordinarily useful. You got still got a strong point, lots of good edge, very thin thin edge and slices 154 cm fantastic steel good corrosion resistance good toughness good edge retention as an all-around well-balanced steel 154 cm is right up there as one of the top uh, 14c 28n and i'm quite certain magna cut will be one s45 vn all those have wonderful properties, some outstanding knife steels overall. This one's well done also. There's some very unique features on this one you don't see too often in here that you want to point out in design. One is this little drop here in the back. It might be a little bit hard to see on the brown background here. But instead of just the regular curve coming down, you know, there's a lot, there, there's not so many anymore that have that little drop which I like I have a few one of my favorite knives currently out there has it in spades and that is this combo Falco definitely a, an appreciated bit it, it, it drops right where the pad of the hand should be hitting or at least that should be the intent of it as far as design goes uh, another thing that I find really nice about this knife in the design, I'm going to go into it really fast, is this clip. They took a whole nother tact when it comes to dealing with the clip, and it's well done. It is a verto, it is a two inline screw. It's got a nice little pop up that's not too high, but it does not have any flat, so it's always ready to to get into your pocket. And instead of being just straight, they didn't sit the screws flush. It does sit in a pocket, but the screws don't sit flush, so you get the stronger screw heads. But to deal with the problem of the screw heads, you have a double angle, which is interesting. The pocket hem still has plenty of room to go up and over and room to go up when it's coming out, so it tears on the pocket less. So you do still get full deep carry. You have a, a nice angle that goes up there as far as handling the, as far as for handling the ham and all that sort of stuff and dealing with the problems and complaints of the rounded head. So you, you get the extra angle. So you get the extra strength of the, you know, the drop forge heads instead of the, where you get the extra material there. So you get a stronger screw head but not only do you get a stronger screw head, but you still get the deep carry clip and a unique and innovative way to handle the pocket clip. I'm quite impressed with that. It's unusual. Most pocket clips you'll see are either going to have something, if they deal with it, it'll be like the banters where it's basically flat. Right, so you get this long flat and this one's even sitting flush. 
you get some others which I'm not complaining about but are fairly similar in their execution they have a similar idea or you get ones that are a single angle like some of those CVVs and they just sit in flush and give you an extra height this is a really nice pocket clip elegant in design while still being innovative in solution and I appreciate that a lot as you can see the blade is quite centered and it has been Another interesting thing is this flipper tab design. They jimp it back here for reasons that I have yet to understand. Uh, it's front flipper. I'm never going to be doing that. Other than a place to put your finger, um, I can't get this with the over the top. However, the uh, lighter flick and plenty of room with a nice flat clip to drop a couple fingers, the lighter flick on this, <laughs> it's hard to do on camera, you guys. It really is. The lighter flick on this often uh, works. If you're not trying to make sure that the entire thing stays on camera, it works a lot better. If, it's, oops. if you're not trying to make sure it looks good, it snaps right out. If you want to make it look good for the camera, it still can snap out. It just ain't that easy. Um, anyway, so that to get back into it, the front flipping action is, is quite good. It's smooth the action is very smooth it's running on uh cage bearings so you've got the bronze washers with i believe cage ceramic bearings you've got this wonderful long back spacer here i'm not sure if that's showing through there you go so you got lots of flat space for your hand no extra jimping back there actually pretty good quality i'll see if i can get the one complaint i can see if you can see that screw head there it just pops up. Um, that's just the screw going a little bit further. You might be able to see it more if I open it. This And, and here's why. I'm making a mountain out of them all. If you can see that little screw tip that pops through there. That's one of the few quality problems I can see uh, on this knife. Uh, another, if you look, if I'm going to be nitpicky, a little bit of over tightening on the back here. You can see that clearly shelved. And it's squishing down more than the others, especially if you look at this side, where that one doesn't squish down nearly so much. Um, overall, before I get to my own personal feelings on this knife, because my feelings are almost sad, this is a fantastic knife. It really is. To give you an idea, though, of some of the realm and competition, there's a Civivi Ortis. This is the fancy version of the carbon fiber in Damascus. This is approximately $80. I'm going to put it down here because that way you can still see it. Another one, approximately $80. $70 or so. There's a Kershaw Knockout in 14C28N. If you don't like assisted, which not everyone does, this is cost, just so you guys know. Kaiser Gemini Vanguard. Approximately the same price. All right, another classic. Civivi Ortis is staying up there because the Civivi Ortis is one of the best bangers for the bucks. At $40, and you get the fancier version for $80. And so that's what this knife is competing with, is the fancier version of one of the best budgets. There's a Kershaw Tumbler. Just to give you guys an idea, one of my personal favorite knives, especially on the trailing point style. Um, I want to make sure you, you can understand the point I'm trying to get across here is these are the kind of things that are competing with it at or below its price point. For that, you kind of don't get a lot extra. I mean, quite honestly, I could happily get this knife for about 20 bucks less. Now, it's not as cool. I don't get the carbon fiber. Their craftsmanship is still here. I get D2 instead of 154 CM. I get plastic handles. It's not the best clip, even though it is absolutely fully deep carry. It's not as cool of a clip. 
Uh, that's narrower through here. It's got a bit of a different blade style, even though it's full flat ground. This isn't supposed to be a critique of this. What I'm saying is I can get close to it for here for for less money. But this is classy. If you take the uh, my faux pas of dropping it while testing out, um, carbon fiber and the snake skin my card is absolutely beautiful. The work on the blade is high craftsmanship. There is no doubt about it. Wipe off, and I'll go ahead and wipe off that off. Um, you guys can't see my fingerprint. Little uh, Spidey Hank from Underdog Hanks. Shameless plug for somebody who does good Hanks. I don't know him. Not anybody I do. I just do business with them. They're good Hanks if you want it. There's a lot of Hank folks out there, so give it a shot. All right, so uh, this is a great knife. I actually recommend it. In its price point, you're going to be looking. It's it's got the quality. It's got the materials. It's got the it's got the blaze out. The rest is going to be your personal preference. It's got it's slightly contoured. It looks absolutely beautiful. It's a good knife. And if it fits you, you won't be disappointed. Great steel. You don't get the CPM 154, but you probably save yourself about 20 bucks by doing so. Um, so you can keep it under 100 easily, right around the, the while only losing maybe 5 or 10% performance. Um, great stuff. Great, great, great stuff. And now, here's what I'm going to tell you. As much as I want this knife to stay in my own personal collection, and I do, because I haven't got rid of it yet, uh, and I really like it. I've had it for a little while now, and I want to love this knife because it looks good on paper, and I love the design. And then you're going to start to see here as I as I work around it. What my problem is is this: it doesn't fit my hand. I come back here and my thumb feels like it's too far forward for my finger. My other fingers barely fit inside there. And this kick, this drop right here that should be getting close to here only comes up in here. So I am choked too far back. The wonderful pocket clip is dug right into the crevice of my thumb there and gives me a hot spot almost instantly. I, I can feel it poking into places before I'm even using it. So if I come up to choke up on this almost choil, these, my pointer finger is crowded too much into my, if I put my middle finger there, my pointer finger is too crowded to go there and I run, run the risk of going there. I would need a bigger choil or an actual divot. If I run the pinch grip, which I actually would with this knife because of the slender, I start to get a little bit better fit over here, but it's way up on top, and then my finger wants to be right there. Right real close to there, and I'm too much. Everywhere I try and put my hand on this, with the exception of just these two fingers up here, it doesn't quite fit. It, it's, it's tucked in too far back. or I'm too far forward, but not quite far enough. My fingers and my hand size, this is, I want to express this, because I, I, I see this on um, eBay and other things when you go to the secondary market. I have sold knives for the same reason before. Um, they don't fit my hand. This is a fantastic knife I wish I could keep, but it doesn't fit my hand. So I keep trying to make it work and then it always feels weird. And uh, 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 it never feels quite right in my hand. I just, my fingers don't fit the layout properly. For anyone who goes wondering, uh, this is not the first thing I've ever had this problem with. I wear a size large glove across here. These fingers fit. These two usually have a little bit sticking up. So I'm a large, <laughs> I'm large in girth 
about somewhere in the middle, depending upon where you measure it when it comes to length. What do you want me to say? It's my hand. Um, <laughs> but yes, the middle fingers, these two seem to fit a large glove just fine. These two are a little bit short. So it's, my hand doesn't fit a glove quite properly on the standard size either, and that's either hand. So while I don't have, there's not a one size fits all world, this is very much an example of where it's an outstanding knife I wish I could keep. It's worth the money, I think. There's competition, but it becomes more of an aesthetic. The quality is there. There's plenty of innovative features to it. Um, that make that make it different. The front flipper is different. The pocket clip is different. Um, the buoy style is when you're not seeing so much in this uh, genre anymore, and it's a very useful blade shape. The wonderful little curved plunge line, great even grinds. The quality's there. Um, this is actually one of those moments where I'm sad that I'm going to be getting rid of this knife and putting it back on the second market or selling it to someone else. The only thing that I do is, and I will take, it's on videos for you all to see. There is a slight slice in the micarta from me dropping it. That's it. As you can see, there's no other damage. It hit right on the micarta on a particularly metallic and sharp edge, and it did some damage. That is life for you. As I'm doing my review, sometimes they get used. But, again, great knife really good knife one i would keep simply because it represents a decent value in a good styling sense the design on this is unique useful unusual the aesthetics are absolutely great right uh the mechanics of it work fantastic the action you got to be careful of it because of the tall flipper tab so you as long as your finger is out of the way It's fantastic. And opening, like I said, if I'm not trying to make it look good on camera, just trying to get it open. Fantastic. And if I'm just closing it without trying to look good. Great action. I'm trying to do it on camera so you can see the blade at the wrong angle and everything is a little bit weird. And it doesn't close so good, you guys. That way, but smooth. And this has been used quite a bit and I have not pulled it apart to clean it or anything held on by just a couple of screws down low instead of, uh, and hit, I'm presuming hidden pins in the back spacer, nothing in there. Good aesthetics. I expected, I expected this knife to do well. It is, has done better for me than I expected. I expect a lot out of that $80 price range. That 70 to $80 price range is, is the value kidney punch, right? You got to bring an A game to that level. Uh, you've got Kershaw, you've got Savivi, you've got CJRB and all sorts of others that are really trying to nail that price point. Some of them with super steel, um, you know, and some of them just like uh, somewhere closer on the 75 here where you've got the Kaiser Vanguard line. We have just really great design and decent, uh, you know what you're getting, decent Good, you're going to get decent materials, the N690, and you're going to get great design and execution. QSP kind of hits the same thing. I mean, you get decent materials, with the 154CM, Sneaks in Micarta, the carbon fiber. That might even be just trying to look at it. I don't know, it's all G10. I don't see any layers. So it's just color G10, not G10, or color, color carbon fiber, not G10 carbon fiber. Again, great little knife. Uh, I actually recommend this knife to people. Uh, this is a good one. But you're going to need to have either slightly larger hands or slightly smaller hands than mine. Your hands are going to need to be just a little bit different. For whatever reason, it doesn't quite fit. My hand always goes just a little bit off of what feels comfortable. That doesn't in any way take away from how good this knife is, however. This is a great little pocket knife, you guys. The grind is slicey, action fantastic. Materials are top notch. Craftsmanship for the price point, again, if there's 20 bucks more, I would be more expectant. The best thing I can tell you about the the quality on this one is there's a screw that's, uh, there's a couple of screws that are in too deep 
and I've got a cutout that goes all the way to here, but it bend this right there. That's the worst thing about this knife. Great lockup. Everything else is well done. The grind is good. The fin fit and finish is right up there. If it wasn't for me having dropped it, it would be immaculate right now. This has been open and closed multiple times, many hundreds of times now. Still smooth action, still centered. Uh, could use a cleaning. Uh, the initial break in goop that will come from the metal on metal contact could use a little bit of uh, flushing out and then it will be back to its near drop shut action that it was prior to this test. With that, you guys, it's uh, going on here. There's there's not much else to say. I got uh, other than it is indeed a really great knife, thin edged, well comfortably contoured and handled. Um, it is of a particular size size range and shape, and for me, it just doesn't fit my hand. Does that mean it's a bad knife? Does that mean you can go buy it? No, no, for real. If you're the type of person. Who is always cramped on something like a week where you're like, oh, I can't even begin to choke up. That is not a choil. That's just something that's that's, that's curved. If you if you're like, oh, I can't do that, or if you are looking at something like the banter, and you're going, if only I had a choil that I could just come up on, it'll fit. It's not a bad, it's not a bad handle in that sense. If you're someone who looks at the rat too, take a quick look at that. And you say, if only I had just a little bit longer handle. This thing is, you, you go the rat one and it's too big, the rat two and it's just too small and you don't have a Goldilocks between the, on one of those, this might be your knife. That's, that size is right in between there. If you're like me and absolutely love the honey badger, but see where that choil and everything fits? Right where the flipper tab is, is where everyone want to put a finger. For me, this is the most indication of why it doesn't fit. When I grab this knife, I can put my fingers in that choil and it is all in the right place. Which puts, if I look at this, you can see it won't fit very well on the yen. Does that mean it's right? No. If there's, if you're someone who who can't take the medium worn cleaver because uh, it's too small and your fingers, it's just too small, you're too cramped, it'll probably fit that. If you're someone to get a closer knife to size and price, this is the fancy Ortis, right? Again, the dimensions and layout, I'm gonna go this way. Dimensions and layout, put my finger in the wrong place on the gannet. I need a little bit bigger hands or a little bit different layout. That's it. That's my complaint. I'm not going to keep this knife because it doesn't fit my hand. But I would if it did. I If this fit my hand, this would already be a part of my collection. This wouldn't even be an option. I have another knife in a similar style that I think is absolutely gorgeous in the Civivi Rustic Gen. Um, so the style is definitely not. In fact, the style is one of the reasons I picked this color combo and and materials combination. It just doesn't fit my hand. It is highly recommendable. It is a great knife. It is worth the money. It's competitive in this price point at 82 bucks. Might be a little high. They might be reaching, but uh, it's really well done. You might get a couple of little bits on a particular production example that might be off, but uh, overall great knife if it'll fit your hand you'll not be disappointed if it doesn't again it's for a particular size there's certain other if you like smaller knives this probably won't work your hand's probably going to be a little too small to fit much like mine um but otherwise uh, try it it's worthwhile it's, it's hard to say which ones don't fit there's always a new layout and there's always different hands 
doesn't fit yours might fit perfectly. In fact, probably will fit perfectly on someone else's. So I'm going to let this knife get a new home and let someone be really happy with a good knife. Give them a discount because I'm stupid and dropped it and I played with it a lot. I'll clean it up before it goes and give someone a low cost, a lower cost version of what's essentially a new knife. Move it along in the secondhand community, um, though I wish I could keep it. That being said, again, QSP Gannett, great knife, worth checking into, worth getting, worth using. Uh, and if it doesn't fit your hand or for some reason doesn't uh, work out, worth passing on to a, uh, a, a home that will uh, actually appreciate it and be able to use it more. So there it is, folks. QSP Gannett, a really nice little knife. Um, that I'm going to move, be moving my example on, but I recommend it for someone who, if it fits your hand. Uh, I can't recommend it enough. It's actually a, quite a good little knife um, that I can't keep. Thank you so much. This is Andrew from A Dose of Drew. Watch this twice, like, and subscribe in the morning. Thanks.